What's going on friends? Today we're talking sharpening. Now it doesn't matter what type of photography you're into. You can be into landscapes, wedding, portraits, uh, events, lifestyle photography. It doesn't matter. We all have a portion of our post-processing workflow dedicated to sharpening. And what's so funny about it is the whole thing is a bunch of smoke and mirrors. It's an illusion. You can't sharpen pixels but you can make it look like you're sharpening them. And it's really cool exactly how it works. You take the pixel, you know what, let me just show you. All right, so let's assume we have a house. And this house has a door. So when you go to sharpen an image, Photoshop has to know exactly where the edges are to apply the actual sharpening. And what it looks for is areas of micro contrast to determine what an edge is. So. Let's just take this side of the roof here. So Photoshop would look at this and see this very dark area here and in, in very close proximity, very lighter areas along here. So Photoshop would assume that, hey, this has got to be an edge. Look how dark it is and look how bright these pixels are right next to it. So whenever you would sharpen it, it would actually make this area here darker and the areas just to the left and right, the pixels to the left and right, just a little bit brighter. That's giving the illusion that this edge here is actually sharper than it really is. Now that was a very elementary way to explain an extremely complex algorithm, but you get the gist of it all. You're really not sharpening anything. Photoshop is just identifying edges and applying micro contrast to those edges just to really make it pop, thus giving the illusion that the image is actually sharper than it is. And honestly, they do a pretty damn good job of it too. So let's jump right in. Here's my top three ways that I sharpen my images. All right, so this is an image I captured in the Blue Ridge Mountains last summer. I believe this is a black balsam tree, but don't quote me on that. So um, I'm gonna run through these three techniques really quickly. I'll save my favorite for last. Um, but before you ever apply any sharpening to an image, you always wanna make sure you zoom in to at least 100%, just to make it easier on your eyes to see what you're working with. So the first technique is the unsharp mask. So I'm gonna go over here, Command J to duplicate the layer, filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Now this is a very simple approach. You simply determine the amount of sharpening you wanna apply. I'm gonna apply a lot so you can see it on screen easier. The radius, which we talked about earlier, dictates the amount of sharpening applied to the edges on the either side. So we'll do 2.5. And then the threshold is kind of like an edge detection system. You're basically telling Photoshop how much sharpening to apply to the actual edges that it can determine. So if you leave it at zero, it's applying sharpening to every single edge at 100%. If you bring it all the way to the right, Photoshop is not identifying any edges, therefore it's not applying any sharpening. So usually leaving the threshold right around about 10 is a pretty good best practice. And as you can see, it made a huge difference. You can now see all the little water droplets and all the different detail everywhere within the image. Now, of course, this image is grossly over sharpened right now. So we're gonna bring it back to like around about 160. We're gonna bring the radius down to about 1.5 and that should make for a pretty clean image. We'll hit okay. And if you ever ever you know, come to the conclusion like, hey, I put too much sharpening on this image, a real easy way to fix it is just to click on the layer that you apply the sharpening to and just reduce the opacity to, the, to a point to where you like it. And as you can see, this made a very subtle but very big difference. Now the next image, this is a picture of my dog Shiloh. And I wanted to use this picture because it was shot wide open. And as you can see, her nose is soft, sides of her ears, her arms, her body, all out of focus, but her eyes are perfectly in focus. So um, this approach is the actual, the sharpening tool. So we're gonna zoom in to 100% right on her eyes and Command J to duplicate the layer. We're gonna add a blank layer on top. We're gonna to come over here to the sharpen tool. And what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna paint the sharpening on all the areas that we wanna sharpen. So we're gonna put it on her eyes, all over here. There we go, that looks pretty good. You gotta give the computer a second to render the difference. And if you come over here to the mask, you'll notice that all you see is the area that we actually painted the sharpening on, which is her eyes. So I'm zoom back out. And if we turn this on and off, you can see the massive difference that this made. 
and this is fantastic for portraits. So you, it gives you the ability to only paint the, the sharpness on the areas that you want. So all the soft out of focus areas, of course you wanna leave alone. So this is a great way to make the eyes pop. Now the next image, this is actually the image that I use for the, uh, the thumbnail for this video. And this is by far the sharpening technique that I use most of the time, and it's the high pass filter. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom all the way in to 100%. Let's go over here to an area where there's a lot of detail on this brass fitting. And we're going to duplicate the layer, and we're gonna come up to filter, other, high pass. And what's sweet about this is it's probably the easiest sharpening technique to apply. So uh, right now, uh, the high pass filter really is, it's just an edge detection system. And here's the radius, there's only one slider and you just tell Photoshop how many pixels you want to sharpen where it identifies the edges. So if I crank this all the way up, you can see how much it is actually going to locate every single piece of sharpening on the image, which of course you don't want to sharpen that much. So we're gonna bring it back down. And if you bring it all the way down to zero, it's identifying nothing. So I usually am somewhere between three and four pixels. So we'll go with four, we'll hit okay. And then you go up here to the layer and you go to the blend mode. Now this is where it gets fun. You, I usually use soft light. And if you toggle that on and off, you can see the difference, it's very subtle. Now, if you want a little bit more sharpen, you can utilize hard light blending mode. And if you really want to get wild, you can come down here to linear light and you can really see the difference. I don't use linear light that much. It's, it's kind of, it over, it over sharpens, but you can see the difference. Like I said, I'm usually somewhere between hard light and soft light. Hard light looks good. You can really see all the detail in the edges of the saw. If you want to bring the opacity down just a touch, you can do that as well. Let's zoom back out to see the final image. And you can really see the difference. Now I know there's many other ways to uh, sharpen images in Photoshop. These are just the three ways that I use most often. So uh, I hope you found the video entertaining. I hope you're able to find some useful information out of it that you can apply towards your post-processing workflow. If you enjoyed the content, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.